Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. We are here for another unboxing video. This time we have the TI-84 Plus CE Python Edition. Da, 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 da. Now, Python and TI Basic. That's exciting. It looks like the uh, Inspire also has Python these days, so maybe I just need to update my, uh, oh, CX2. I don't have one of those. Uh, I did have the original CX and the battery life on it sucked and I've been wary of getting the CE models because of that experience, but uh, the CE I have right now that I reluctantly got in a previous unboxing video, um, it actually has a really good battery life, so they must have made some improvements since those initial releases. So hopefully I will be able to enjoy this for years without having to worry about changing the battery a bunch or just really bad battery life performance when I'm tinkering with it. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get to opening this sucker up. So a little background, I've been watching these for a while. So there was an external device that you could use with the TI-83 Plus Premium Edition that uh, was released in France and you could you could connect it to the CE Plus Premium Edition and, and run Python and it was a circuit Python thing. It was like a little box. It was kind of cute, but it was also bulky. And then they eventually released a Python Edition in France, it was Edition Python, but you know, all the buttons are in French and nothing against any other languages, of course, but it, I, I don't know it and I'm not able to take the time to learn it. And so uh, I'd rather have one in English. So these released in the US just recently. I mean, just a few days ago, really. And what's interesting is, since I've been keeping my eye on this, uh, you know, I have various sources where I'm hearing news about it. And one of them was the Adafruit newsletter, one of the few newsletters I subscribed to. And they said, you know, hey, TI is releasing these things soon. And I'm like, I know, where can I buy one? And they, they were like, we'll let you know when you can buy one. And then just a few days ago at work, a colleague of mine said, oh, hey, uh, jokingly, the perfect calculator toy for David does not exist. Oh, and then he linked to this. And I was like, oh, wait, does that mean they released it? Uh, so, you know, my colleagues know me well if he's making that joke, but uh, yeah, it turns out that day they released it. And the thing is, after he said it, he linked an article that talked about the release. And I was like, does that mean they're releasing it today? And I went online and I looked for it and I couldn't find it. And uh, about 30 minutes later, I thought about it again and I couldn't find it. And I was like, you know, maybe I'm not looking right or something. And I was looking mostly on Amazon and around the TI education website. And uh, then I looked at another half hour later or so after doing some more work and they were there on Amazon available. So I'm not sure if maybe I was searching wrong, but I didn't change how I was searching for things and it just showed up. So I think I might have ordered one of these within half an hour of their release to the Amazon market anyway, uh, which tells you how excited I've been for these things. So I have scissors that I bought expressly for getting into packages now, so I should not be endangering myself anymore. So if you're here for that, ah, sorry. Um, but, you know, maybe I'll get careless or something. Oh, geez. Oh, man. It's funny, because these are such simple packages, really, and it's like, oh, what are you unboxing? You're just cutting into a piece of cardboard, and there's a little bit of plastic in there, but it's whatever, you know. This is the package that comes in, and we're unboxing it. potentially. Now this one should come with some pretty good instructions on um, how to get started both with Python and anything else on the calculator. Uh, ooh, yeah, I knew I didn't want to get too close because I knew that wire was back there. And I might have cut into it. No, I didn't. Okay. These scissors are really good, so they would have just tore through it without let me know much, I think. Uh, it's nice we got cables, you know. I remember unboxing old ones and a lot of them just don't have any kind of connectivity. Um, cables that come included with them. 
it was a real toss-up between this one and like the pink one. Uh, I couldn't figure out which one I liked more. Uh, this one's a little more masculine, but I don't really care about that. Uh, I love my pink calculators. Um, ooh. Yeah, I, I love my pink calculators. So, I almost got that, but this one matches the, my Nintendo Switch that I have. So, I was like, my Switch Lite. So, I was like, all right, I'll get the one that, that matches something I have. Because uh, I might happen to carry them at the same time. Now, I am tempted to not turn it on, but take it apart. Because I could be among the first to do a teardown on this model. This model contains... Uh, as usual, uh, an ASIC, an application-specific integrated circuit uh, that is manufactured by Texas Instruments that I believe probably still implements uh, either an EZ80 or a subset of EZ80. I don't think they implement the old-school Z80 anymore, though it supposedly runs at a similar clock speed to uh, to an old school Z80, or at least effectively so. I, I need to do more research on that. Some of the information is kind of hard to understand because they do purposely obfuscate it because despite how much I love these things, they are still proprietary devices. Uh, so th there's not a lot of openness to the specifications of, of their, especially their ASICs. Uh, but it should also run a an ARM32 coprocessor that is dedicated to the the circuit python build on here and it is a um a subset of circuit python so let's turn it on instead of taking it apart validating os it's an os they aren't even messing around they know hey this is an operating system dude um yeah the battery's low that's normal for being shipped these lithium polymer batteries get stressed when you keep them full and unused for too long so there's no reason to ship it with a full battery. Uh, in fact, it's detrimental to the life of the battery. So I actually don't really know much about using these, but let's see if we can find Python. I'm going to assume it's in program. There it is. Python app. Boom. Python firmware. Please wait for this process. That's interesting. It booted into a whole nother environment is what I think just happened. I'm pretty convinced that it essentially just booted into a whole new environment. There's a hello. Let's take a look at hello version 2. So this is just several print statements and you can see it's Python 3. You know, CircuitPython is based off MicroPython and they implement Python 3. This is not uh, this is as modern as it gets. So when you know when TI says you know this is the language we chose to have distraction-free programming learning on our devices, uh, I mean it's perfect. You know, Basic was okay. It was great for a while. There, it was the best. Uh, but with MicroPython and CircuitPython, I mean, what is Let's run it. What is even the point of basic anymore? <laughs> I'm sorry, basic lovers. I know it's great. It's a great language. Um, TI basic got me pretty far. What is your name from hello? Oh, I accidentally pressed up. What is your name? It is, was it already in alpha? It probably was already in alpha. This is not Dvorak. Oh, it didn't let me type. Okay. Oh. Alpha lock. Look, it told me alpha or second alpha to enter name. I didn't read the instructions is the problem. Uh, hello, David, it says. So that's pretty simple program, you know. Yeah, let's go ahead and quit. And it looks like it brought us back all the way to the standard home screen, whatever that is, the whatever that's called. Uh, TI Basic, huh. same as usual. And does it load every time? 
Oh no, it's it, hmm. So yeah, there's a lot to explore here. There's two microprocessors at a minimum in this thing, one of which is 32 bits and is dedicated to CircuitPython because CircuitPython only runs on 32 bits. You can't run CircuitPython yet. Nobody's done the work to make it happen on uh, on an 8-bit processor, like an EZ80 or Z80. So yeah, this is very exciting. I'm gonna spend a lot more time with this one. I know I've said that about other calculators, but I actually, I'm enough of a fanboy that this is gonna become my main calculator for a while. Uh, I have been running mostly the TI-86 and the TI-85 because I do a lot of uh, base conversion in my studies and they have a very quick and easy feature for converting between bases. Um, but I think I'm gonna just set those aside for a while and work on getting to know this one. Learning this one should also teach me some of the basics of just the CE line in general, which will allow me to help or, or create better content, uh, any content <laughs> regarding those. So yeah. Okay, so I've spent a couple days with it and I have figured out how to kind of operate the thing. These are documented in the PDF. Uh, the package did not come with very many instructions as I thought it would. Uh, I guess they would need a bigger box to fit it all because there are several PDFs that explain how to use this calculator and there is a dedicated one for the Python programming application. Now this is implemented as an app. If you go to apps, you can launch it from here. Um, there were a ton of apps that came with this thing, but I factory reset it and just put Python back on it to have the most space available in memory because I don't need a lot of those scientific apps. And I back them up on the computer so I can get to them if I need them. Now, we can launch it from here, of course. It does the same things. I have a little test here. It's <laughs> extraordinarily minimal, um, but there is a graphics library. now. The PDF that documents how to use the Python interface does not document TI graphics, which is weird. Now, one thing that's really cool, we could just get a shell right off the bat, which is pretty typical for any Python programming environment. It's the least you would expect, but uh, it's still cool to see on a calculator. Unlike the TI basic programming language on here, which I... I am kind of excited to explore again, even though I was talking smack about it earlier. Um, unlike that, this is an interactive shell. They call it a REPL. I think it stands for Read, Execute, Print, Loop, REPL, R-E-P-L. I might have that wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, and multiple programming languages implement this. Ruby has a REPL. Uh, in Python, we got a, a nice one. Blah, 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 blah. I am babbling now. Uh, these are all documented. There are a lot more shortcuts, but for the most part, you can find what you need to on the keyboard based on what symbols are there. These are the ones I found in the documentation that I was looking for when I was first tinkering with it that uh, you can't find intuitively just by looking at the keyboard. These, these are the ones you need to kind of memorize. So I just wrote them out. I taped it here for now, but um, I'm sure I'll get them memorized pretty quickly here. Um, now I can do stuff like, and it's gonna be slow typing because I'm not, I'm not used to this. I'm gonna try and use my fingers, my fingertips because uh, I see people going fast that way. So let's let's see how that goes. Now uh, we we will see an alpha lock character up here, right? I can press second. It tells me I press second. I can press alpha, and I can print a letter. Uh, delete is a backspace, which is a little weird getting used to if you're if I'm more used to typing on kind of the older school calculators where delete deletes the character it's under that's underneath it and you don't have to worry about insert so that's weird it's a little different so think of it more like typing on a computer uh, delete is a backspace so um, we can alpha lock and that locks to second and if we press alpha again it will stay locked in capital letters. So uh, you will see 
you will see that you need to press it again if you need to get back to lowercase letters. So that's that's kind of convenient. A lot of these symbols um, are just what they are. So sometimes you'll be typing away and you'll need a symbol and you have to come all the way out of alpha lock to get to them. Now there are some convenience shortcuts here. In fact, you can do most of the, build the most of the skeleton of a program and just fill in the details by using this function key. Uh, if I wanted to define a function, it, it drops that there for me and I can type out the name. Um, if I wanted to, uh, you know, get some control statements going. I can I can pull these all from here, and this is very well documented in the in the PDF that you can get on the TI Education website. You can it it gives you all the shortcuts to all of these commands, and you can even drill into modules, right? So I can drill into the math module, and I can get like kind of prepared statements from it. If I wanted to import everything from math, that would be very easy to do, and now I can refer to the the functions and methods in this uh, module directly by name. Type my own code here. Let's go into alpha lock. I want help P. Hopefully, if I keep this up, I'll get much faster at typing these things. I can get a list of the modules available here. Now, anyone familiar with either CircuitPython or MicroPython is going to notice a lot of stuff missing here. You know, this is a very trimmed down revision of MicroPython and um, of CircuitPython, actually. I believe this is forked from CircuitPython specifically. Uh, I did tinker a little bit to see if I could pull some advanced features out of it. You will notice specifically this TI Graphics Library. This TI Graphics Library is not documented either in the PDF or anywhere that I could find. Um, everything that I've seen about it is just kind of community members, mostly in France, because they've had these calculators for a while now. Um, they uh, have just written some example code and their explanations are all in French and I have to Google translate them, but I was able to figure out you know, how to use this thing. And, um, all, but all these, other, all these other ones are very thoroughly documented. They even show you in the PDF how to get to, how to, get to it from here. It gives you all the shortcuts you need to get to them quickly. And you could potentially build applications very quickly from this interface, which uh, I've I used to be pretty good at typing on these on the older school models, just in basic, and I could knock out a program pretty fast, especially considering if we go look at program, oh, we have to quit. So we have, this is an application that we have to quit out of is how it's implemented. If we wanted to look at a, you know, TI basic program, which we still have, I did a little draw. There's nothing in here. I just wanted to see what, see it do something. Um, but if we go, if we go in there and we edit it, and we go to program, you can see it's it's a, kind of a similar type of menu. And uh, you can kind of pull all the the basic functions that you need just out of out of these menus. Um, yeah, and I, I would dare to say that the Python environment is significantly more robust. Now, one thing to note, uh, you can quit out of this thing directly by, by either doing second quit um, or you can do second on, and that will turn off the calculator, obviously, and completely exit out of the application. If, however, you allow it to auto power down, it will retain this session. So if you want to retain a session, just don't close it out. Um, and the best way to retain the code from a session is to use the editor to save it. Now, you can see I just did a very simple test. I just wanted to check that the graphics library will draw something to the screen. Um, I, I was going to take the time to try and like animate it spinning or something, but I don't know if that's possible. And I probably would have taken way too long to do it. And I've already taken a couple days after unboxing this thing to figure out this much. So yeah, so what this does is it just, it pulls in the graphics library and gives it a, a much easier to type name on this keyboard. And then it pulls in disp weight that function from the TI system. Now this is a command that I, I didn't know. When I first started trying this, I didn't know I needed that display weight command. So I would draw a rectangle and it would you know, zip by, which is 
silly, but this display weight will draw to the screen and pause it. And then this, this GFX clear screen clears the screen because if you don't clear the screen, it will show you the contents of uh, whatever it just printed out on the screen. It'll still be there and it'll just draw this rectangle over it. So if we run it, it just draw, it clears the screen and then it draws a little rectangle and then it display weights. And you can see this little icon spinning in, in the corner here. And um, that, that's all I've done so far. There are functions in the graphics library to allow you to like fill in rectangles, draw polygons, fill in polygons. I don't know about the like animation capabilities of it, but I'm sure you can combine the graphics library with the math library and other things to kind of figure it out, the plot library, uh, to do some graphics. Oh, a uh, second quit sends a keyboard interrupt. That's interesting. That's almost as though you hit control C on a computer. Um, I believe on also does the same. Let's try it. I distracted myself by pressing buttons and forgot what I was saying. So if we press on, it also sends a keyboard interrupt. Um, it's very interesting. I mean, this is a computer, man. This is a freaking computer. Uh, yeah, so I learned there are all sorts of tools that you can connect to that I will probably get and explore. The I learned that from the help modules output, which is gone. There we go. So you can see TI Rover and TI Hub. This allows you to connect to uh, peripherals, motors, servos, um, sensors, and this allows you to connect through the hub. You need the hub to use the rover, and they are sold separately, but they're fairly affordable for what they are. Um, they're not much more than the calculator itself each, though. Um, the rover is like a, a pre-built robot that you can program. And obviously, there's some existing libraries here. Anyway, I will stop babbling because I just really wanted to show you the basics of how to edit things. Uh, oh, I should show you tools um, you can do various things from here. You can get a new shell. Uh, these are just quick commands. Uh, there is a specific catalog. If you press second catalog, oh, let's escape first. Second catalog, you get a catalog for uh, Python stuff specifically. Um, we can quit out of that. Escape. Uh, it, I like how they're really using the heck out of these things. Uh, it reminds me of the TI-85 and 86, which I have been using a lot of. This thing is for you to build strings with. Uh, it kind of just throws everything here, and you can, you can type in here, um, and you can find any character you need without having to know where it's at, and you can build a string meticulously and get exactly what you need, and then um, paste it, boom. So I just get, you know, I'm not trying to use that a lot, honestly, but escape, I don't want to quit. What else? We have files. So this is the file I have, you know, and I can manage it. I can replicate it, delete it, rename it. And there's quitting Python from there. That's a good, but one of my favorite things is just shell. We just have shell access. Uh, it's just great. So y'all enjoy it. Um, let me know what you build. Peace out.